Hi guys, uh, welcome to our partial online. I'm Chef Tan. Okay, so we both now is 1 30, so I'm going to start the demo. And thank you very much for watching at the moment. And today, I'm going to do a Christmas vlog or Bush the Noel. So, before we start, there's a few things uh, I want you all to know. First, because for this time, it's a Zoom class, we are making two uh, camera also two account with student affair you can have a look one is for the main cam another one is for the side camera so you can view both on the same time because I know the main cam is a little bit far but it's good for you to see how I work then the side camera we are going to show you the texture and it's going to move around so you might have to switch once a while to make sure you get both camera Alright, then uh, if you have any question, every time when I finish a product, let's say example, I'm gonna for today right, we are going to have uh, almond sponge, jelly, and also shanti. Each time I finish a uh, element right, you can ask me any question, then I'm gonna explain you. But afterward, in the end of the class, I'm gonna discuss with you a little bit about the product of today, so you can ask questions during the moment also. So the first one, I'm going to start with an almond sponge. This is almost like a jacon, but it's rollable. If you see the recipe with a normal jacon, like that, there's a little bit different on the ratio of the flour and the sabayon and meringue. So this one, after we done that, it's flexible, we can roll it. So first thing, I'm going to warm up yolk, whole eggs, and inverted sugar together also icing sugar so all these four ingredients together I'm going to put it inside the mixer and warm it up to around 35 degrees so when we whip like this one right we can back, get the maximum volume the, there's a reason we have to warm up the yolk huh? normally I don't like to whip the eggs when the meat temperature is too cold so if it's chiller temperature when you whip back first it will take some time to whip second is when you whip, whip up the volume of it is not maximum and also when you fold right because the temperature are a little bit different they are not working on the most I mean uh, maximum volume they are going to collapse easier so now I'm going to put everything together and warm up with 35 degrees Celsius for the icing sugar right we can put it together we can separate it after it doesn't really affect too much but me I prefer to put it together I know some chefs would like to put the icing sugar separate. So after I put the whole eggs, inverted sugar inside, yolk, and also icing sugar. Make sure to sift it before. And now I'm going to double boil it to warm it up 45 degrees Celsius. We can use a thermometer to check. Now it's a bit too cold, 17. So I have to warm up a little bit more. There is a question. What is inverted sugar? Inverted sugar? Okay. Uh, someone is asking why is inverted sugar? Inverted sugar is a kind of a form of sugar that usually adding together with enzyme or acid to separate the molecule of the sugar. So the function of inverted sugar normally it can provide moisture to our product. So this function after we done right, they are going to be a bit moist. 
because there's a lot of sugar inside the recipe. With that and other sugar, you can do this sponge also. The only thing is, the sponge are going to get drier faster because you don't have any uh, sugar characteristic which can provide moisture inside the recipe. Normal sugar doesn't provide you too much moisture and it doesn't retain the moisture inside the product. I'm using a low heat. Huh? Don't use a uh, hot boiling water, otherwise you are going to cook the eggs. So take your time to warm up. Usually I need to warm up to 35 to 40 degrees. This is the temperature that I'm looking for. Now it's around 36. So I'm going to change for which to warm it up. By using a metal tool with a whisk. Now I'm going to use the medium high speed beat for around 5 minutes to make sure you raise up nicely. So after you beat alright, I'm going to reduce the speed to a medium low. Continue with for another 3 minutes to make sure we cut the bubble to make it even. I'm going to take some time. Uh, I'm going to hold it first and I'm going to start to explain you about the syrup. And if you see the syrup, we have the uh, recipe for the syrup. So for syrup, it's very simple. Prepare the sugar and water, mix, boil it together to make a normal syrup and add in the raspberry puree. So I pre prepared the syrup because the method is very simple. So I'm not going to demo for you how to make a syrup so I can take the time. Alright. Alright, I'm going to add the syrup. And while waiting for the tabayo to raise up, I'm going to jump to make the raspberry pumpkin or hot raspberry jelly. So the ingredient is straightforward for this one. First, I'm going to combine pectin. Make sure we are using edge pectin because we are not cooking a jam at the moment. So if we are using uh, an edge pectin, right, the texture of the concrete or jelly is better because it melts faster in your mouth. If you are using other pectin, right, the concrete are not going to stand properly. Because this recipe, the ratio is designed for energy practice. So put the packing and sugar together. inside the pot and for the sugar and pectin right make sure we combine it nicely so like this way right, it's easier to mix So I'm gonna add in the sugar packing mixture. I haven't started to cook the puree, eh? just add it and stir nicely. Just mix it well, make sure there's no lump. Alright, by using a medium kit, I'm gonna bring it to boil.
And while waiting for this right guys, you can have a look on the you can have a look on the tabalion. Now the texture already raised up as you can see, it's fluffy. I'm going to reduce the speed to medium slow. By this way, we are going to continue to wait for another 3 to 5 minutes. This way will help to cut the bubble to smaller size and you will see the mixture are going to be smoother. So now I have just to make, bring the jelly to boil. Alright, let it boil properly. Okay, as you can see, a full boil of the heat and add in the gelatin mask. Just mix it nicely. Alright. After mix well, now I'm going to reserve it, wrap it and reserve it on the side to for later use. I need it to cool down to room temperature so the texture are going to become almost like a gem then we can spread it out after Alright, so I will come back with the sponge So now the tabayo Please continue with it to make it smoother. I'm going to start the meringue. So if you if in your house right you have only one mixer, you can wait until the salmon is fully raised up. Okay? Then after that take it out everything because the salmon will wait for some time. Then after that we can do the meringue. But if you like me, you have two mixer before the salmon is totally finished, I'm going, I'm going to start the meringue. So put the egg white inside the bowl. We can put the salt inside the egg white. It's just a small amount so it's not going to restrict the egg white to raise up. So we can put in the beginning no worries. For the sugar we are going to put after after the egg white is already for me, I'm going to add the sugar to it. So by using a medium stick, By using a minute stick, I'm gonna beat until it's foamy. Once it becomes foamy, I'm gonna add in the sugar to it. Try to, for the marina, try to use a medium stick because if you are using a fast stirrer, the bubble structure are not going to be nice. And when we fold up, if there are a lot of big bubble structure inside the marine, when we fold, they tend to collect easier. But if you have a lot of small bubbles, consistent size, when we fold up, they are going to hold each other nicely, they are not going to collect easily. Alright, as we can see now, the marine already for me. I can add in the first part of the sugar. Get it mixed nicely. After 10 seconds to 20 seconds, we can add in the remaining sugar.
And now I'm going to beat the meringue to medium or firm pit. For this meringue can be slightly firmer, no worries. But make sure it's not dry. Eh? If you are not good in seeing whether the meringue is medium or firm, right, you go for medium. Okay? Do not go for firm because sometimes right, if you are waiting for too long, they are going to get dry. And while waiting for the meringue to raise up, so the submarine is done. Now I'm going to switch to a lower speed and mix in the almond powder. Because almond powder do not contain any gluten, so it's not going to collect our sabayo. But make sure we use the low speed just to roughly mix well. Later we can fold the meringue easier. Alright, as you can see now, the almond powder already mixed up with the tabayon. We can off it and take it out. Now I'm going to show you the texture. So you can see we get a very fluffy texture of our tabayon. And now for the meringue. It is done already. So as you can see, we get a pit which is quite sharp, not moving much. But make sure it's not dry. Now I'm going to fold both items together. Always like to study happier, so Marine always goes to the Samayo. So guys, as you can see now, the mixture already fold nicely. So it's super fluffy. Now I'm gonna fold in the flour. So if you are walking alone, right, you can fold the flour only on the surface, then you fold. Repeat the step until you finish all the flour. But do not pour all the flour at one time. Otherwise, right, your flour are going to stick together because there's a gluten inside. Once in contact with your eggs, right, they are going to form gluten. So if they stick all together, you get a lot of lumps. And after, just fold it nicely. As you can see after that, you get a fluffy mixture and shiny mixture. And the recipe right is just nice for 60 times 40 trays.
So if you want it to make it very smooth and very even, so I'm gonna use a ruler to help to make it smoother. So just relax. Button and go the other side. Do not press it, just relax cross. Okay. So like this way right, we get the mixture even and clean the side. Now I'm going to paint inside the oven with 180 degrees for around 8 to 10 minutes. We have to check the colors. Okay. Later I'm going to show you after a bit. Alright, so 180 degrees. Okay, I'm gonna bake around 8 to 10 minutes. And if your oven can adjust the ventilation, close the ventilation, so we'll trap the moisture inside. If you cannot adjust the ventilation, right, I suggest you can put a small cup of water inside so it traps the moisture also. Can't hear you, sir. Can't hear me? So, I'm gonna. Am I speaking too fast or what? Disconnected. Yeah. Too far. I'll go back now. <laughs> inside the oven or the moisture so like this way right if you can adjust the ventilation always keep the ventilation closed mm -hmm. is it connect or no okay so keep the ventilation closed so the sponge after bake right is, is more moist if you keep the ventilation open right usually the sponge are going to be a bit drier so if you your oven cannot keep the ventilation what you can do you can put a small cup of water inside so it can provide some moisture to your product as well. But if you see your product, if you put the water is too moist right next time you can take out the water. Alright. So now I'm gonna go for the next one, the shanti. Crispy. We are going to do the dark chocolate shanty. So the dark chocolate shanty, right? There is two part of the cream inside the recipe. One of the cream we are going to cook. The other cream we are going to add it in the end. So this one we are not going to cook. We are not using cooking cream, huh? both also is whipped cream, the fat content is around 35%. Cooking cream normally, or we call it as single cream, usually the fat content is around 17 to 20%. So now you have, you need to have a cream, we call it whipping cream, the percentage of fat usually around 35%. That's the reason it can be whipped up afterwards. So the first part of cream, we are going to warm up. 
brings the volume. Is it And then the butter sugar, you can scrub it into the chocolate. For the glucose, you can scrub into the chocolate as well, but now the glucose is a little bit thick. So I'm going to use the hot liquid to melt the glucose. Alright, now the cream is almost boiled. We don't need to bring it to a full boil, just it's almost boiled right. The temperature is more than 70 degrees, it's more than enough. I'm going to add in the gelatin mask. And I'm going to pour a little bit mixture into the glucose to melt it, so it's easier to scrub. The glucose and the inverted sugar inside this recipe right, is not just to bring out the sweetness uh, but main usage is to provide moisture to our chantry so after we wait right they are not going to dry up so fast So after we have the hot liquid and the gelatin is already dissolved I will pour over the chocolate now we are going to make the ganache. This we can call it as a dark chocolate shanty or dark chocolate with ganache. We can mix well. Where there's a problem? They can't hear clearly. They, they can't hear clearly. Is it because the... Is it connected? Yes. Connected. I don't think so. You no, just now. I want to use my phone to check the voice. Maybe it connected to my phone. I off the Bluetooth. So you check the whole channel. I thought it was okay because the sound was not any problem. You said there was echo. Yeah, they said it was echo. So Maybe one has... This one is weird. It's funny, then, I think. Alright, now I'm gonna blend the ganache. Still the same. Can you hear me guys? I have a suggestion. Why not we mute that one and unmute this one? Sorry? But like, this is connected to that. Yeah. So cannot be like that, that is the direct. Mm. The Bluetooth is connected. Wait, don't do that. Try again. This one you guys can you hear me?
Hello, hello. Better now. Now, okay. It's better. Alright. Sorry about the technical technical issue. Is it coming? Hold on. Sorry for the technical issue. You check your color. So guys, before we add in the cold cream, we have to make sure we emulsify the ganache over here nicely. Eh? Blend until it's smooth. If we, if we don't blend until it's smooth, right? As you can see now, it's very smooth. If we don't blend until it's smooth, right? When we add the cold cream, we cannot. We, even we blend again, right? They are not going to combine nicely. Because the temperature plays a big part over here, when it's a little bit warm, the fat is easier to combine with the liquid. If it's cold, right, it's not possible. Right. Audio is not clear. Video is not clear. Audio. Okay. Again. Do we want to disconnect this one? I just speak to connect the normal voice. Probably it's easier. Try first. So I need this one. No. no, don't need to mute, just disconnect the Bluetooth. Then use your use your one to okay. go up. You can transfer to the wire and then use your Bluetooth. Alright guys, now we are not using the Bluetooth connect with the speaker. Can you all hear me properly? Can you hear me? Yeah. Or... Haven't commented anything. Uh... Alright, now I'm going to add in the coffee. Uh... And blend it to make sure it combines nicely. So guys, for this dark chocolate, right, keep the percentage of dark chocolate around 55%. If you are using higher percentage of chocolate, right, the whipped ganache are not going to whip up easier, easily later, because they are too thick. So if you want to use higher percentage, you have to reduce the amount of the chocolate. Need that one? Yeah, and me. So now the mixture is done blending, just scrape the side to make sure the chocolate is not stuck at the side and the bottom and stir it nicely. As you can see, we get a smooth, almost like a chocolate sauce. It's clear now. Uh, so it's this microphone. <laughs> now it's using this right. Look, I think the connection is not good. Maybe. Yeah, because just now I try my phone right when I want to listen to a voice message. When I wear that, I cannot hear. I after I uh, only I can hear. So maybe it's the problem. No, they said better. Everything clear. Okay. So chef, maybe you need to summarize the procedure just now because some of them couldn't get what is the benefit. What is the procedure earlier? Which one? From I think the sabayon that side. I don't remember. 
<laughs> how to remember? Yes, when I do only I remember and I see. Okay? Uh, guys, if you about Sabah and Marine, right? You can go back to the basic because we all is a subscriber of our Akash of Mine. Yes. You go back to the basic uh, French pastry and also uh, classic gato. Both of it uh, I'm shooting, so I'm gonna uh, when I do the shooting, I spend the same case. Okay? For the sponges. So Take your time and do back the video. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm gonna explain about the whip ganache. So for the whip ganache, right? The dark chocolate we have over here, I suggest to use 55%. If you switch to a higher percentage of chocolates, the mixture are going to get thicker. So if it's too thick, we want to whip, they cannot be whipped up. So make sure you use 55%. But if you want to use higher percentage, you have to reduce the amount. I cannot tell you the amount you have to try. Alright, because different percentage you need to use different amounts. Or in other way, you can follow the recipe I'm using. So after you are done right, if you see the mixture is too thick and you want to wait, you can already start. You have to add extra milk or cream to make it a little bit soft so you can wake up. Because usually the best amount of fat inside the whipped cream to whip it up nicely is 35%. That's why I call it as whipping cream. If you have a cream with 50%, 5-0. It's more difficult to whip up and you will see after whip up the volume is not going to raise up a lot because they are going to stick very fast because the fat content is too high. Same case for our chocolates. Okay? Because chocolate contains fats, cocoa butter, which are thicker than the normal butter. So now I'm gonna keep the shanti or whip ganache inside the chiller, wrap it nicely overnight. Usually you need to you have to rest minimum eight hours. So I prepare another set earlier. If it's not enough, I'm gonna use a small part of here to combine together to whip up afterwards. Alright. Fizzy, can you bring the sponge? I show them. Yeah. So guys, as you can see the sponge after big, I transfer to a wire rack so you can see the color and it's flexible. Can you pass me a button please? Now still a little bit warm, but I think it should be okay. So over the mix on a parchment paper. I will try to remove it. Usually it's better to wait until it's fully cooled down. Now a little bit warm, we just have to be more careful. So this one is 55 centimeters, so 27.5, I'm going to cut the cup. Okay, I'm going to cut the cup. So I'm going to take half of it. We can roll like this way or we can overturn and roll the other side. It doesn't really affect for what I'm going to do because afterwards I'm going to put the side with the cream again. So don't need to worry. This one. Can you explain what temperature you use to storm the baking? 180 degrees 
Okay, for around, this is exactly 9 minutes, okay? But you have to check your oven. That's why I say it's better to check the colors. 8 minutes to 10 minutes. Do not uh, just follow exactly the time they will give you because all the oven is different. And now I'm going to apply the syrup, raspberry syrup on top. So it's better to wear the syrup. This is not super sad. I need to add a little bit and then with the normal. So I will apply the thin layers of syrup on the sponge first. So it gives moisture to our sponge. Because the sponge is thin, so do not apply it too thick for your syrup. Just one layer will be enough, sufficient. You see, do we have a soup pack here? Easier for me to go the okay. yeah. So as you can see, I apply everywhere with one layer of the syrup. So wait for a while to let it absorb nicely. And the red fruit jelly, after keep inside the chiller, as you can see, it sets. Just mash it a little bit to mash out the structure. So it becomes like a gem texture, then we can spread it out. Right. Just a thin layer. So now I'm going to keep the jelly inside the freezer together with the sponge for a while, like 2 to 3 minutes to make sure the jelly sets a little bit. After that, I'm going, I'm going to whip up the shampoo and spray on top. So we don't need to wait. As you can see, after you keep inside the shiller, it will become firmer, the texture. And now I'm going to pour inside the mixer. If you see the texture too, too firm, become like a ganache. Then it's the time we have to add a little bit of the cream or milk to make it softer. And for the dark chocolate shanty or the nuts, right, I would suggest to use a paddle instead of the 
width, so it's safer. This is the one I just said, uh, one of my uh, Because uh, now my notes is sufficient, because uh, the one I pre prepared, right, I already used some part of it. So now I'm going to add uh, some new one. So I make sure it's enough. Make sure if you want to use the new one, you have to let it rest at least 8 hours huh? because I have the one I prepared, so it's better. Now I have a texture which I can wake up. Then I'm going to use a pedal. And use a pedal to clip it until it's right. Now it's light enough, so you can, as you can see, it becomes like a piping consistency. Do not overweight it, otherwise it's going to be rough for texture and it's going to spin. Just make sure you can hold the shape, then there's more, more than enough and sufficient. That's why I suggest to use a pedal instead of a whisk, because when you whisk right easily, you are going to overweight it. But if it's a milk chocolate ganache or normal shangri, milk chocolate is, is easier because the texture are not going, it's not so sensitive. So we can use a waste for that. And now I'm going to measure. Guys, I get a scale. Okay hey guys, I'm going to get the scale. So with the half tray of the sponge, we need around 250 grams of the shanty. Alright. Now the jelly is almost set. 
We can apply the chantilly on top. Spread it evenly. If you feel when you spread it, the jelly is melting, you can always keep it a bit longer. So you can get a better layer. Now I'm working a little bit too soon. So the jelly is start to melt again. So be careful, don't spread too much. And after, fill out the piping bags with our shampoo okay. five uh, layers and the starting So I would suggest always have a silk pad at the bottom. It's easier to roll like this way because it's not moving a lot. Right. So as you can see to roll it right, just take out the parchment papers, fold it over and let it stick nicely. So they are not moving. Just pull it and let it join. Alright. So after almost finish, overturn. And make sure, as you can see here, the joint part, put it down. Yeah. Uh, this way, right, is, we're going to get the shape better. Yeah. 
So after we press it, just five or three layers of the chantry outside. So make sure you can cover everything. So for this one, right, just to make sure you put everywhere. Don't need to be super, super clean. No worries. Because we are going to smooth it out afterwards. By using a small metal knife, just spread it over. To make sure everything covered with the shanty. So there's many designs we can go for. Like if you want to be very elastic, like this way, it's already nice for a lock kick. But if you want it to be smoother, now I'm going to show you how to do it. First, clean out the excess inside of the shanty screen. After just cut a parchment paper, a strip, and just place on top. Follow the shape of the locket. Just pull over. Make sure the locket is folded, so this way we can get a smooth, a nice shape of our locket. So it's simple. By like this way, we can get a smooth texture of our locket. Uh, is it this one? Or? Uh, and then you stick it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, it's not, I'm just going to just the uh, particle in the nozzle. And now the leftover screen, I'm going to transfer the parking pad with a special nozzle. I will show you. So the nozzle I'm using right is triangle. Okay? Just cut half of it. So we have the layers. So I'm going to use this half, the other half I'm going to use joker decoration to cover it. So you can see, we have a nice design for our side, it's like a locket or like wood part. So the other half right, I'm going to keep it empty because I'm going to use the joker decoration to cover it. And now I'm going to slice half. Because the cake is still frozen, so it's easier to slice.
So like this way, you get the so like this way, you get a nice shape of the look. If you want to cover with the decoration, it works, or we can leave it like this. Actually, if you have time right after we cook the first layers of the shanti cream, we can freeze it nicely so it's easier to transfer. Then yeah, after that, we can pack it on top so we can hold it easier. Right now, I'm going to do it right away so it's a bit difficult, a bit more difficult to cut by the works. So guys, over here right, I have the chocolate decoration. Uh, you are going to get, get to learn all this decoration for the uh, Apache online. Now, because the time, I can't show you exactly how, how I'm going to do it. But it's very straightforward because if you see it's actually chocolate stick and spread the chocolate on top of the plastic. For those who already take the basic class, automatically you know how to do this. And just open it. If you break, let it break. So we we'll get a like a wood bag. So now I'm going to start to stick the wood back over here. Make sure it's not too long. So at this way we have a contrast for both. When we arrange the chocolate decoration, right, try to make sure it's irregular. 
try to make, don't make it very consistent or else it's not going to be nice. And now I'm going to add some snow powder. Because the very right in my case, it's not fully frozen yet, so it's more difficult to transfer. That's why I put on the underliner, then I start to dust it. If you can wait a little bit more, freeze your cake nicely, then after that you can dust, then only transform the liner, it's easier to work. And after that, you can dust very powder. So I dust one side a bit more, which is the lighter color. And also, this one brings some flavor, not just the decoration. You see, I need some small powder. Sorry, small powder. Little bit. So you can see the contrast of the powder. Afterwards, I'm going to dust a little bit of cocoa powder. See, we get a nice layers contrast. And simple to do, which you can do in your home easily. Simple recipe, but lots of tending inside. And to stick the new Goldie fried, I'm using a neutral base to stick it nicely. Just 
for some thoughts so we can stick uh, to it easily. So we can hold it to bring out the contrast of the colors. Alright guys, the most important one, our logo. So guys, this is the product of today, the Bush Manoir or Christmas Rock Cake with the flavor of the revisited Black Forest because this time I'm using the raspberry, so it's a raspberry chocolate cake. So I hope you enjoy it. So you can ask me the question that we regard to this product. And as you can see, in a short time, and we don't need to have a lot of tools for this product, straightforward, and it's easy to do in your house. I'll read your question yeah. a lot. A lot. Alright. Is it possible or not? Egg free version, you have to look for a recipe of sponge, which is egg free. Now, I mean, egg free you can check with Chef Angelo because uh, he, we are going to have an eggless, eggless recipe. Why? Yeah. <laughs> this is doing a sponge this time. So we are going to have an a eggless sponge, then you can use for the locate. Now this is with egg, huh? I cannot just simply tell to change right away. The recipe are going to be different. Some even ask, can you repeat the ingredients which we put for double boiling? I think it was the... It's egg, egg yolk, uh, icing sugar and inverted sugar. Okay. Uh, is NH and NC pectin the same? NC pectin? I haven't seen any NC pectin. So probably you have to check. <laughs> Usually in pastry, pastry line we are using uh, NH pectin, yellow pectin, X58 pectin and basically this is the three main pectin that we are using. Okay? There's more pectin but usually we are not using it in our industry much. Because these three pectin will cover and to react to most of the product and the ingredients that we can use in pastry. What is the ratio of gelatin to water? Uh, now the gelatin we are using in our school is 200 bloom. So we have 200 bloom which we consider as a gold label of pectin. So with gold, we have to mix six times of water to one part of the pectin. So if you have, sorry, six times of water to one part of the gelatin. So if you have 10 grams of gelatin, you need 60 grams of water. If it's 200 grams or gold, okay? Is gelatin and gelatin mass different? Uh, different. Gelatin is the gelatin powder or gelatin leaf. Gelatin mass is the one we've already mixed with water. So, it's a solution. can you just repeat the baking temperature and also how many minutes? 
180 degrees for around 8 to 10 minutes. Okay. They can hear your voice, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, you don't know what I'm answering. Okay, mostly it's the voice. Yeah, take, take, take our time. What is the temperature we will add in gelatin mass? Uh, the temperature we add in gelatin mass it depends on the product itself. Let's say example, if today I have a product which is warm, higher than 60 degrees, we can directly put the gelatin mask inside. So they will melt slowly our gelatin mask. If you have a mixture, the temperature is 30 degrees, you have to melt the gelatin mask and you put it inside. But if you have a temperature is cold, let's say example, you have a whipped cream, you have to mix the gelatin inside the whipped cream, which your whipped cream just take out from the chiller is 4 degrees. You need to melt your gelatin mask and put some whipped cream into a gelatin mask combined. So texture and temperature closer, then you add in the leftover gelatin mask. It's easier to combine. Okay. Uh, what all variation can be used for sponges? What? what? I think this question come out when you were putting the, the, the red color syrup. Uh huh. What more time do you repeat the question? One more time? Uh, because there's another there's a question that looks like the size absorb the syrup better. And another one, what all variation can be used for sponges? Like the flavor, I mean the variation for sponges to do a low cake first the characteristic for itself have to be low able. So you can use whatever sponge which is low able, you can use for the Swiss roll or bush to noir. Then after that it depends the syrup. Not all the sponge needs syrup because uh, nowadays in pastry diner we like to use there's another kind of roll cake called uh, shoe roll or shoe sponge. It's like it's like the way we prepare like the cream puff. Those kind of sponges we don't need to put syrup because it's already very soft. But this is a classic recipe for the almond sponge which can be low level. It's a little bit dry if you don't put syrup, so it depends on the sponge itself. Okay, um, chill for how long before you whip? And why do we whip the ganache? Ah, it's, a, it's not a ganache, it's a whipped ganache or, whip, or shantri. So, we have to chill minimum 8 hours to let the cream structure and the chocolate structure combine nicely and rest properly. So, it's set, it's still, as you can see, the one I done earlier, I take it out, is already slightly firmer. The one we just made is very watery. So you have to let it rest inside the chiller for 8 hours, then take it out to whip. The reason to whip it is because we want it to be light. If you use it right away, it's very heavy. Like, if I use it right away, now when I do the cake, it's going to be very dense, and when you eat it, it's going to be very heavy. With a whip up cream, it's going to be lighter. Uh, how many grams do you put the chocolate whip? Uh, 250 grams for the half tray. The tray I'm using is 60-40, so if you have a 30 and 40 centimeter for the sponge, use 250 gram of the Chantilly cream or whipped ganache. Jelly, I didn't calculate because it's thin layers. Okay? If we are using milk chocolate, what is the amount of cream and chocolate you need? Okay, you can check back up the line. The Petit Antoine, we have a whipped ganache with a milk chocolate. How long to freeze before cut? Freeze until it's cut. It depends on the uh, freezer. If I have a plus freezer, 10 minutes I can cut. If you have a normal freezer, you might need to freeze it properly, you might need to have 2 hours. Okay, what is the weight for this estimation? This person. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's half kilo. Oh, yes, it's around 500 grams. It is sufficient for 5 to 6 people usually. What is the dots for? Just now, I think you used... Oh, uh, it's to stick with the gold leaf. Just now you use what? Neutral glaze. Neutral glaze. Oh, neutral glaze. Neutral glaze. Yeah. But anything, you can use a sauce, a ganache, a cream. Just because I does a powder, so the surface is a bit dry, right? They cannot stick with a gold leaf. So if you want to stick gold leaf, you have to do something sticky to stick it nicely. Any more other questions? If not, we can end this uh, yep. class. Any other question guys? It's straightforward, right? it's not too complicated, which you can do at your home, but it's a nice product. No?
So then wait for five minutes. Okay, is the Apka label edible paper? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, for us, right, because to make ourselves easier, we don't use uh, edible paper, but of course, we can use a uh, choker decoration for it. No problem. Uh, yeah. Can you tell the invert sugar procedure for the Sabayon? Invert sugar procedure? I think the first one, the sponge, no, the, right? The invert sugar just put together with the eggs and warm it up. Then after, we can whip it up. There's no procedure, just put all together. Chef, can you repeat the baking instruction for the almond sponge about the steam and bend? Uh, if you can see from our oven rack, we have a... a I don't say a button, but we can take out the ventilation, which means we can open a small hole inside the oven when it's baking. So, you think it's easier? If normal oven rack, you close it tight, the heat and the, when you bake, the moisture comes out from the product. They cannot escape from anywhere. So you trap the moisture inside your oven right. But if you open a little bit for the ventilation, there's a small hole which open up. So the moisture we trap inside the oven are going to release. Okay? So this makes difference because more moisture we are going to push out for that properly. Okay? But sometimes it takes long time to bake and also that makes the product too wet. The rest of the if you bake a, if you want to bake a tapas, we don't want it to be wet. So I will, I will release the moisture in the beginning. But some oven don't have this, okay? And some oven when you close, it's not even super tight. Which means if the oven is not super tight, like the home oven, most of it, huh? they are not super tight, means you is already not a tight. So usually what you can do, you can put a small cup of water inside to create more moisture, to make sure there's a moisture inside the oven. Again, that's a question, what is inverted sugar? Inverted sugar is a sugar, okay. To understand easier guys, I'm, I'm a chef but I'm not a scientific, I'm not a professor but I can explain to you about the sugar. In the sugar right, you have two molecules. Normal crystal sugar you see in the world right, is making from the roots, big roots and canned sugar. This is a two traditional way to make the sugar. And they extract out the molecule of it. Inside the sugar they have a glucose and fructose. So when glucose and fructose they bind together, then they crystallize, you get the crystal sugar that we usually see. Okay? But inverted sugar, uh, they go through a process to break these two molecules separate. So, normally the add inside is either acid or enzyme, because both also is acid. Acid, after you heat it up a long time with the sugar, they can separate out to make sure the sugar not crystallized, so they cannot bind together. So the inverted sugar is not crystallized. If to understand easier is the sugar which cannot crystallize because both molecules cannot combine. Fructose and glucose molecule. If you want to understand more, you can go to the Wikipedia to check. It's very simple. What temperature should we get the egg mixture while cooking on the pot for the sabayon? 35 degrees. Can we, okay. Can we use non-dairy whipping cream in chantilly to whip it better? Uh, of course you can use but the taste is not as good. Okay. Um, the packing sugar mixture at all or at one time? Yeah, you can. As long as your mixture is not too... But I mean, not all like this. Huh? You have to stir at the same time. Add and stir. Okay? Chef, can dakwas be used instead of jacon? Uh, cannot. Dakwas is not flexible enough. So when you roll right, they are going to crack. But afterwards, if you really don't care about the look, of course you can use that. Huh? But afterwards, I know I cook nicely the surface with another cream, but if you want to have a nice layer of your sponge not cracking a lot, uh, you have to use, you, you don't use the tapas. Instead of almond sponge, what else would taste equally good? But Swiss roll a lot, huh? you can use a Swiss roll sponge, shoe sponge, uh, almond sponge, lady finger, so many. How do you prevent whipped ganache become grainy? Uh, don't over whip. You over whip grainy, then you cannot use anymore. I think that's all. Any more questions? No question? So far, thank you, Chef. Alright, thanks guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and also hope you enjoyed the product. It's a short time, but I think uh, whatever I can explain, I try to explain to you all. I hope you can understand easily. And revise back, because actually what I explained over here is 
what I explain inside the upper shape of line in the video. So sometimes you might have to go through one or two more times to understand what we're explaining inside because in the basic we explain more theory. If you directly go for intermediate line, I think you don't understand. So I would suggest always go for basic, finish all the video, then go for intermediate. So you understand the theory we explain inside the basic. So when you go for intermediate line, you understand easier. Okay? Thank you very much for watching. Bye.